everyone, I'm Mr. Leung. So in this video, we are going to talk about the uh, MC questions or some true or false question in chapter 12. So the topic of chapter 12 is uh, reproduction in flowering plants. Uh, but we also uh, will study the uh, different types of reproduction, asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction, and apart from the flowering plants, we shall learn a bit about the bacteria. And also, even in the flowering plants, there are two types of reproduction of it. So uh, what, you, what, what we learned before is the vegetative propagation and also the uh, sexual reproduction in the flowering plants. So let's take a look at the concept map of the whole chapter. So in the concept map, so you can see that the main theme is reproduction and the purpose of the reproduction is to allow continuation of species. And after that, there are two types of uh, reproduction we are going to learn. One type is asexual reproduction and the other type is sexual reproduction. And for these two types of reproduction, we need to recall something we learned in chapter 11. That's the mitotic cell division in asexual reproduction. And also the meiotic cell division in the sexual reproduction. And of course, in the sexual reproduction, we also learn one very important process, which is the fusion of the gamete. In other words, that's the fertilization. So that's why what we need to know later on is to compare the sexual and the asexual reproduction. And then we go to some example of the sexual and asexual reproduction. For asexual reproduction, although the chapter uh, is talking about the reproduction in flowering plants, we also talk about the binary fission in bacteria. They are also undergoing the asexual reproduction and then Later on, we talk about the vegetative propagation in flowering plants. That means for the flowering plants, they can also undergo the asexual reproduction. And on the other hand, the, flower, the flowering plant, they can also undergo sexual reproduction. So that's why the plants, at least you know that they can adopt different types of reproduction. To, con to continue their species. In this chapter, because we keep talking about sexual or asexual reproduction, mitotic cell division, meiotic cell division, or the vegetative propagation in flowering plants, and then for the flowering pollination, or okay, some that, that kind of sexual reproduction. So that's why we have a lot to compare. We need to compare the mitotic and meiotic cell division we need to compare the sexual and asexual reproduction. We need to compare the different types of vegetative propagation. And then we need to compare the vegetative propagation and the sexual reproduction in plants. And then for the flowering, so we need to learn the wind pollinated flower and the insect pollinated flowers. So any advantage or disadvantage, okay, by adopting such different mode of pollination and also the reproduction. And then we also need to talk about the change of the flower before and after the pollination. So that's something, uh, the whole picture of the whole chapter. Uh, when you do the revision later on, at least you need to know what you are going to study. Okay, let's take a look at the first question. Which of the following statements about binary fission in bacteria is incorrect? So let's take a look at A, B, C, D option, okay, one by one. So for the option A, binary fission occurs more frequently when food becomes scarce. So the point is that when the food is becomes scarce, so that's why not enough food, and then it is an unfavorable condition for the organism okay, to undergo the binary fission. So the concept is that if there is not enough food, so if the bacteria, they still undergo the binary fission, one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16. So if they keep reproducing themselves, more and more bacteria will compete with each other for the food, for the space. So that's why it will make the condition much more unfavorable. So that's why actually we got the answer. The answer is A, which is incorrect. 
But of course, okay, we have some sportsmanship. So let's take a look at B, C, D. So for option B, we can clarify the concept that before the cell division, okay, there must be DNA replication. So when we are using some drugs to kill the cancer cells, because the cancer cells, they are undergoing the uncontrollable cell division. So that's why we use the drugs to stop or to prevent the DNA replication of the cancer cells. So that's why it can prevent the cancer cell to keep undergoing cell division. And for option C, two bacteria are produced when a parent bacterial cell carries out binary fission. So that's what I keep saying that like 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8. So for each cell division, okay, there will be two more uh, new cells to be produced. Okay, so that's why 1 to 2, and then 2 to 4, and then 4 to 8. Okay, so that's why option C is also correct. And then for option D, it produces bacteria with genetic makeup identical to that of the parent bacteria cells. So that means they are genetically identical. But the reason is that because the binary fission is one example of the mitotic cell division. So that's why the genetic makeup or the genetic composition of the daughter cell is identical to the parent cell. So let's talk about the question two. So the diagram shows the vertical section of a bulb, that means the onion. So which part provides food for the growth of a new shoot? So the point is that we need to find where or, or which structure is storing the food. So for the good practice, one, two, three, four, what are they? So for the uh, structure one, it is the dry scale leaf, okay, and its function, the main purpose is for the protection. And then for the second one, the fleshy scale leaf, so that's the part to store food. And then for part three, it is the bud to grow into the new shoot. And then for part four, which is the stem, so by one, two, three, four, okay, so you will know that actually the answer is uh, the fleshy scale leaf which is, is the food storage part. Then let's take a look at the question one. So uh, they are the true or false question. And the part A is that pollination helps in the dispersal of the plants. That means the daughter plants, they can go far away from the parents plant, okay? So uh, does pollination really help in this process? So we need to recall is the definition of pollination first. So what is pollination? Pollination, it means that to transfer the pollen gland from anther to the stigma of the flower. So it's talk, just talking about the transfer of the pollen gland, but not the whole plants. So that's why for uh, part A, actually the concept should be like this. It should be the seed dispersal to help the dispersal of the daughter plant rather than pollination so that's why for uh, part a okay which is false and then the correction is here and then for part b fertilization is the fusion of the pollen gland with the ovum in the overview so we also need to take a look at the definition of fertilization first so for the fertilization it means that the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete. So for part B, it seems to be correct, but we need to clarify the concept is, is the pollen gland the male gamete? And the concept is, the pollen gland just contain the male gamete. So remember the metaphor, okay? I talk about it in the lesson. So water bottles contains water. We cannot say that water bottle is the water because it's just the container. Water is water. Water bottle is water bottle. So in th this case, the same idea. Pollen gland contains male gamete. So that means pollen gland is not the male gamete. Okay, so that's why if we need to uh, correct this statement, so the correct one should be the fusion of the male gamete in the pollen gland to fuse with the ovum, ovum, that means the female gamete in the ovary. So that's why, that's the concept we need to clarify. 
for uh, question 1a and question 1b and then for question 2 so you can see that uh, the diagram shows a vertical section of the tomato so for the structure 1 2 3 the question is talking about identify the flower parts okay so uh, it will develop into uh, structure 1 2 3 so of course for the good practice what are they so for the structure one it is a fruit stalk and then for structure two they are the seed and then for structure three it is a fruit wall so when we know that the basic idea okay, of one two three and then we can take a look at the table on the same page so firstly we have the fruit wall fruit wall developed from the ovary wall so that means okay we can say that from ovary lah, okay but of course uh, fruit developed from ovary and fruit wall developed from ov ovary wall and then for the tomato seed the seed developed from the ovary so uh, by these two structure at least you can eliminate some options so in the structure two and the structure three so uh, structure two the seed okay they develop from the overview from the overview and for the structure free it is the fruit wall and then is developed from the ovary wall ovary wall so that means uh, option a and option d they are wrong and then for option b and c also these two choice style and the flower stock so which one should be correct so let's check the table again so we can see that after fertilization the style it will wither and fall off so that means they will disappear so that's why in the fruit okay we never see the style so option c will be the answer so that's the question for uh, chapter 12 so i hope that uh, this video can help you to do revision better if you have any question so please leave it below okay i will answer you as soon as possible see you next time bye bye